Hi folks, welcome back to At the Benno Park, and today we're going to do a Styracosaurus habitat. Uh, I've already uh, used my method of estimating the exhibit size and surrounded it by fence. Um, I haven't finished the landscaping, but left pretty much what was there, except for a little bit of terrain raising in the center. So the first uh, bit will be to uh, set up the foundation of the viewing area. I decided to go with a stone foundation and the uh, light colored wood floors and with the round end that last piece needs to be flipped over so the, the, uh, the plank work lines up and uh, doesn't look uh, out of place and a uh, little cattywampus. So uh, Having laid the floor in, I realized I missed a spot to put the stairs in, and doing that again, uh, I uh, set up the, the two-way uh, in and out of the uh, viewing platform. And having decided to make more of the platform round, you saw I put the floor in place before replacing the foundation walls with a round piece and grabbing the foundation, pull it up so there will be kind of an edge to the wall and a base for either a wall or fencing so that our guests don't manage to uh, accidentally fall into the exhibit. The uh, rest of the foundation now needs to be put in since I've established the stairs and it's pretty easy. Uh, little bit of uh, scaling to uh, get those uh, slanted pieces to clear the, uh, the step effect on the stairs so that the edge doesn't show. Uh, and you can see that the stairs are currently proud of the surface of the ground and that's a non-starter. So I have to fix that one way or another uh, and by doing it with modular pieces uh, I can now see where things are going to sit so I can adjust the position of the structure to protrude a suitable amount into the exhibit and have the pathways where they can be connected uh, to the stairs and go, go and fix the, the fencing so that it mates with the building and that will give a complete enclosure uh, to this habitat area. Uh, now I have a plan to have this area be a viewing space and to keep the animals away from the fence for several reasons. We don't want a Styracosaurus gnawing off somebody's hand while they try to feed it popcorn. Um, going to make a, a steeper slope there and line it with rock. Uh, and that means the fence itself uh, won't functionally be necessary. Eventually we will get habitat markers which will um, be invisible except while you're, you're working with them to uh, mark an exhibit and also to and run in a space like this from fence to fence so that the game engine can recognize that it is all intended to be an enclosed space and thereby judge uh, how much space is available for the animal and whether the, uh, the vegetation and the water meet the animal's needs. So uh, the vertical rocks will be something that can stop animals so they can function as a fence. But because they're paired with the ditch, this provides an area for guests to look into the habitat without any barrier to their sight. Uh, and this means that uh, they get a more naturalistic experience. Uh, and also it's awkward for them to get in there with the animals. <laughs> we really don't want our guests in with the animals. So one of the things zoos do in circumstances like this is they add another fence, uh, usually along the pathway or just offset from the pathway. I'm setting this one up right at the edge of the path uh, and it's intended to keep the guests from getting right to the very edge uh, and 
one presumes to uh, discourage them from trying to climb into the exhibit after all. Uh, obviously, it wouldn't prevent a determined person, uh, but I don't think the guests in the game will include characters like that who essentially break the rules of how the guests move and get into the habitat to cause your park trouble. Um, so having put in rocks there, I decided I'd complete that in part to give that surprise effect again, uh, someone taking the path to the viewing uh, platform won't see an animal until they get onto it. And guests coming along the pathway won't uh, see an animal except in a distance uh, until they get to that area we just built. So doing the pathing path now to set up how guests can come in to the viewing platform. And I decided I wanted something a little uh, off the path, in part to separate this animal from the Nasutoceratops. Uh, and of course I want all the boundaries to have a smooth flow to them rather than those sharp corners that you often get with the paths when you bring them up to another path. And even so, uh, I wanted to uh, do a, a real world style guest discourager uh, to, to make them not cut corners. Uh, it's a little hard to walk through a rock in uh, real life. Uh, and uh, so rocks are going in. And uh, this will also add a visual element uh, to people going through the park uh, as gamers uh, rather than uh, in-game guests uh, to break sight lines, to uh, raise the level of the ground so it's not all the same flat parking lot kind of effect having a little trouble focusing in there on the, those trees that I was plopping down. Um, so uh, again, I want to fence off the area where guests are not supposed to go where there are no exhibits yet. And this means even though I'm doing a Styracosaurus habitat for this video, I have to run some fencing back uh, toward the, the bridge area. And I decided to swing it around the seats I had already placed to uh, give little, a little bit of an alcove there for the guests to sit in. Um, spinning the habitat around, I'm trying to get a sense of how it's looking, how it might play, where the paths will go, what I can do to change things, and where to put the animal care building. And that's why I flattened that terrain. Uh, so now's the first layer for the uh, animal care building. And as I did with the Masuzu Ceratops, the part that the public can see easily will be a little more decorative than the part that is essentially backstage, uh, where only keepers and perhaps somebody on a, a backstage tour would see. Because in the real world, this would save the zoo money. And uh, they can put that money to the animals. So in order to further conceal the building, there's going to be some rocks and eventually some vegetation. Uh, so um, single placements because I'm looking for the effect I want and I need to make sure the animals have a smooth path to get into there and smooth out the terrain around the rest of it. Um, so all my foundations are in now, and that's pretty good. And I can move on to setting up uh, the landscaping with vegetation and terrain painting. Uh, I didn't like how this flat arrowwood uh, spreading bush sort of hung out there in the air. So I decided to bring in some more of the, the taller, um, more spherical arrowwood bushes to conceal that a little bit. And the bamboo is my go-to uh, screening plant. And by putting it there, I can um, screen one of the views to the, uh, the animal care building. And 
You can see now I'm bringing in some temperate uh, trees. Uh, the bamboo is, is temperate also in this game. Uh, but these animals are starting to move into the part uh, of, of the uh, Mesozoic where the forests are starting to change. There's still a fair bit of um, gymnosperms, but angiosperms are being a bigger and bigger part of a lot of the climates. So uh, a lot more uh, angiosperms in this in, in habit yeah <laughs> in this habitat um, are, is more appropriate than a heavy uh, conifer uh, vegetation. So a little bit of uh, messing around, dropping those plants down, checking the views, hiding the uh, the bases of those uh, tall cup oak trees who tend, at least right now, to float above the ground surface, uh, which just doesn't look good. And since those were painted in, I don't have the control to move them down into the ground. So the next option is concealment. And that's the one I chose. Uh, at this point, I'm moving on to uh, checking out the viewing platform. So part of my conception for this viewing platform is that it's a one-way uh, system. Obviously, the guests aren't set up to work that way, uh, so it's mostly headcanon for, for that kind of thing. But because I see it as a one-way platform, I want to have a divider uh, on the platform to separate a little bit of the space. Uh, and there's, you can see the start of it there uh, just off the, uh, the stairway. Uh, then I went on to putting in the, the railing, uh, and it's always fun to uh, get that all lined up the right height and stuff, and then move on to the, the curves, which uh, are the fussiest part of it. Uh, the good bit about that is that once you get one curve section done, and if you get it lined up well, you can then just duplicate it and move it to another curve section, and then your job is mostly just lining things up right uh, as a group, uh, which is much faster to do than each of the individual elements. Uh, you know, fence piece by fence piece and such, like that. Uh, so, you know, contemplating what, I, what I've done and trying to decide what's the best next step. And to me, that was deciding that that one little wall wasn't enough to do the job of a separation uh, and also provide a platform for the guests using this separation uh, in part uh, for their education so that um, I can put a, an information board on there and make it a little bit more of an emphasis on the habitat facing part of this elevated area uh, being the largest part because uh, that just makes sense. Um, Having put the round columns in there, which work very well for those pointed corners, uh, it made sense to repeat that element and use it as the column supports for the structure as a whole. And the idea here is this will be a roofed but open uh, platform. Uh, so I need to set up uh, an interior uh, ceiling for what will be the platform, and that will help me to find the, the roof uh, and put it in place. Um, so those pillars, when they went in, uh, squared themselves up to the floor, uh, which meant they didn't reach the ground, and they didn't look good enough to me uh, sitting on that, uh, that the platform. And so I decided they all needed to be on the ground, and it, they looked um, more functional if they were uh, sort of inset in the wall, so that the wall is an infill between the pillars. And uh, 
because only the glass pieces have rounded uh, roof elements, those I couldn't match the actual rounded corners of the platform. So it was okay to have the, uh, the square corners on the, uh, the roof. And in go the various pieces. And that left me with that kind of weird bit there, uh, which required an, an answer. And I decided ventilation was the answer. So much like I have done on the Nasutoceratops um, care building, I'm using the uh, slatted wall to be an indicator of a venting uh, operation. And you'll see this again in the care building for the animals. Uh, Got to put the eaves on so it looks a little more complete. And uh, then there'll be some height adjustments to be made because you can see those pillars in a couple of places peeking through the roof. And that's, that's, a, that's a non starter. Uh, so I can't have that. Uh, as you can see, the habitat side does not have a roof. And I kind of decided that deliberately. And then, you know, wrestled with whether it was the right decision, uh, whether I should extend the roof over that. Um, you know, I could go either way. Um, and um, ultimately, I think I settling with the, the open air and open sky part right up into the rails is a, a nice variation um, on the way to do this kind of building. So that's what this one's getting. Uh, the stone walls always look a little unfinished, so they need some kind of, of coping on top. And for this one, I decided to go with a broad um, but shallow uh, piece of stone. And uh, I think it looks pretty, pretty good on that corner. But there's a lot of coping work to do, certainly more than just the fence work that was on the habitat side. And some of it is going around a corner. So there is fussy work in doing that kind of stuff and uh, getting these rectangular elements to go around the corner and still look decent, even though they're not uh, uh, curved at all. Uh, and there's no need to have it uh, to, you know, go through it at the same speed we were watching the original pieces because uh, it's very similar kind of work. Uh, but, uh, you know, you get to, to look at the faster stuff uh, and the, the angled stuff needed its own kind of work to uh, get the length right, get the angle right, and all that kind of stuff. And the width as well. Uh, so, but there it is. And then once I got the first one of those in place, it was time to think about railings. And uh, I decided to duplicate that element and run it as a full width element on the, the open part of the stair there, but sink it into the wall to be a railing element on the, uh, the stone uh, edges of the uh, stairway. Uh, picking up the column that uh, is used for holding up the roof uh, and uh, scaling it to a narrower diameter, uh, it also can serve to be an uh, upright for the railing. And then once I have that one section in place, I could duplicate it and pull it over to the outside uh, wall of the viewing area. And as you can see, I managed once again to have an, an, another piece of uh, stonework there, but rather than just deleting it, <coughs> excuse me, rather than just deleting it, I use it to be a bit of foundation for that one support holding up the end of the railing there. And this is the view screen that I promised doing the usual trick of uh, one of the dark, uh, ultimately emissive windows. 
uh, and stretching it out to look like a widescreen TV. And uh, that's all part of the furnishing this platform. Some benches for people to rest, some trash cans just to encourage them to not throw their stuff into the habitat. And time since this habitat now exists to set trash cans uh, along the path uh, toward it and around it because all that stuff needs to be in place uh, later on and I find it a little bit easier to get uh, that work done uh, in chunks rather than some massive place the trash cans program. The habitat, ne habitat needs a sign so uh, that's this next section uh, using a stone wall as the base and uh, the concrete pillar uh, as a foundation um, so that that should be not that much bigger than the wall itself but then also using it as a capstone and a little bit of shade for the forthcoming letter work and uh, the scaling tool is just a, such a such a godsend for this kind of work. Uh, with the foundation, the, the basic element uh, completed, I moved it around to sit it in that space a little bit better. And now, of course, it's letter work, and we'll go much faster through the letter work uh, in terms of the speed of how long it takes. I've got this segment running. Uh, pretty darn fast for getting through the stuff because it's a lot of fussy work. And as you can see, Styracosaurus doesn't quite fit in four meters with the size the letters come. And uh, so now I'm using my trick of duplicating letters I've already placed because it saves a lot of uh, fussy work and moving them down uh, with any new letters I have to add. And then I can think about things like whether they are all uh, equally proud of the surface of the wall. I can think about things like the kerning, which is the letter spacing. I can think about things like the whole size of the name and whether it's suitable. So here's a little bit of a tour uh, of the exhibit. Uh, you can see the nameplate. Uh, we go up the stairs, up, up the stairs, and onto the platform. And Get it around, get, well, get around that corner somehow and look into look into the exhibit rather than the wall uh, or the fence. Uh, and there it is. And uh, while you weren't looking, I put some styracosaurs in there. Uh, they'll walk around out there. And this is the view our guests would have. Uh, the slope means the animals will be visible more. And they also have a private space on the other side of that where they can uh, get out of the visitor's view if that's what they want to do. So a little bit of how it looks from the Styracosaurus side and then the departure side where uh, our guests can go down the stairs and back to the paths uh, and the split. They can go back toward the bridge into the Cretaceous area or they can go to the left and head out in deeper into the Cretaceous area. Here is that viewing area we set up earlier and now it has vegetation in there uh, both as a further discouragement to anyone jumping the fence and also to help more set the atmosphere and make it look less like a, a barrier there. Hello Styracosaur on the hill. Um, and uh, again, another nice view uh, and an information sign attached to the rock there. Got to keep those guests educated. We're going to zoom through here for a build you didn't get to see. And this is the care building. Uh, it's got a, an opening that the Styracosaurs will fit in according to their AI. Uh, they, their horns actually would like hit the top of this. Uh, but they'll go in as you saw that one going in. Uh, but uh, above there you could see a uh, raised area, I'm thinking powered ventilation in here, and inside um, one of the, the columned 
uh, separation areas uh, where keepers can work with the animals and also uh, stay safe from them. So that bit with the horns really bugged me uh, and I ultimately decided I couldn't stand it. So I took that uh, section of wall that ran across there, you saw the horns just phase through it, shrunk it a bit, uh, it's still not enough really, so shrink it some more, try to get it above that Styrax horn height, that ought to do it. So now that the opening is taller and uh, I can I can find more happiness in that uh, for uh, <laughs> uh, what this thing is going to look like. Um, so yeah, they seem to like it. They've decided to lay down in there and take a rest or just kind of graze their way across the sand. And that's our happy new home for our Styracosauruses. So I hope you enjoyed this one. You know the drill about clicking. And uh, this is Dino Bob signing out for this video.